while I grew up in a very traditional Chinese American family, um, a, a three generation household with grandparents, parents, and children living under the same roof, and in a family that was very involved in the uh, Chinatown community, involved in community organizations. I went to Sunday school at the Methodist Church in Chinatown. But uh, I don't think that I actually had a strong sense of ethnic identity. I think I was very Americanized. I didn't actually personally experience any kind of uh, sense of racial discrimination while I was growing up, even through high school uh, or in college. And it wasn't until I started running for public office and encountering some very uh, 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 hurtful comments and things like that that I had never experienced before as, as a high school student or a college student that it really started to cause me to realize that uh, even though Los Angeles seemed very cosmopolitan on the surface, there were a lot of tensions underneath. The Rodney King incident was actually a major episode in my political career. I became the first member of the city council to call for the police chief, Darrell Gates, to resign after he had made some public comments that seemed to condone the beating of an innocent person by police officers. Uh, this was very controversial. Uh, it was something at the time that was very unusual because uh, at that time, the chief of police was a political power unto himself, and council members only criticized the chief of police at risk of jeopardizing being able to get a response from the police department, um, uh, responding to neighbor complaints about service or about a, a crime wave or things like that. But I decided I had to speak out even though the mayor and the other members of the council hadn't spoken out uh, just because it was so egregious that the chief of police seemed to be covering up for the officers. It was taken by supporters of the police department as, as a traitorous uh, a traitorous statement. Uh, on the other hand, I think, especially in the African American community, it started to point to, to the fact that, that perhaps the police issues went beyond purely racial issues. Uh, in other words, that uh, there were some deep underlying issues that had to be dealt with in terms of the management of the Los Angeles Police Department. Well, it was a very horrific experience uh, uh, seeing how the riots really tore up Los Angeles. Uh, when I first decided to go into urban planning as a college student, it was because Los Angeles ha it was one of many American cities going through a, a wave of racial tensions based largely on economic competition. Um, I, I had lived in Los Angeles at the time when the riots took place in 1965 in Watts, so I still remembered that. It wasn't really my plan to get involved in these issues, but sometimes when you're in politics, issues force themselves upon you. And that was basically what happened, both with the, the Rodney King incident, uh, the, the, the role that I started to play in um, police and, and uh, racial relations issues in the city. Then when the riots broke out, partly because I, I had started to get more involved in these issues, but also as the only Asian American on the city council, even though I wasn't Korean American, but still I found that uh, many community groups looked to me to play some kind of role. Also, um, the news media tend, tended to come to me partly as a, as a voice. I thought as a council member, it was part of my job to go out and see what was going on. Uh, I remember riding in, a, in my car with some members of my staff uh, on the first day of the riots, seeing really horrific things like uh, 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 fires that had been set probably by homeless people using trash at, at freeway entrances. I remember uh, driving down a street in downtown LA and seeing a man carrying a knife, and, and what he was doing was running down the street using this big knife to tear holes into awnings in front of storefronts. Um, things like that I, I, I can remember. And of course, I talked to a lot of the Korean business owners who were complaining about lack of response from the police. Um, uh, so, so those were some of the images that stand out clearly in my mind. 
beyond seeing things, I still remember other senses as well, such as, for example, smoke, smoke in the air. And uh, the smoke became to me a kind of a metaphor for Los Angeles because one thing that's fairly unique about this city is that many people identify only with a particular part of Los Angeles. They think they come from Sherman Oaks or Koreatown or uh, Boyle Heights. Uh, and sometimes pen people don't identify with the city overall, but the smoke that was produced by the riots covered wide areas of the geography. And I thought it was a kind of a metaphor for what was going on in the city, that is, that uh, you may think you come from only one neighborhood or one area, but actually there is a kind of a common thread uh, or, or a cloud of smoke that covers wide parts of the city, but it's something that normally is not visible. Only if you have a riot, only if you have a lot of smoke are you gonna see that, uh, that people in different parts of the city have certain things in common. The main emotion that I can report was a feeling of uh, passionate anger and fear. Uh, it was, there was fear because uh, these were business owners, in some, some cases residents, in areas where uh, uh, violence was being directed towards Korean Americans uh, or, or businesses owned by Korean Americans. Uh, but also there was a lot of anger, a sense that the police department and other city authorities had let the Korean American community down by not being more responsive. And a, a kind of anger about city government in general not being prepared to take the steps needed to try to defuse the situation earlier. Uh, so I, I remember that. And I'm, I'm aware that many Korean Americans actually gave up on LA and moved out of Los Angeles to Texas or New York or other places where they thought they might have a better chance. So it was tragic to see that uh, many Korean Americans felt that they had been treated very badly, not only by the riots it themselves, but also just the, the inadequate response from city authorities and a pessimism that Los Angeles represented a future for Korean Americans. I had to find a way in my role as a council member to try to use my leadership role to uh, comfort Korean Americans who felt aggrieved about the way they had been treated during the riots, but also to find ways to reach out to African Americans to get them to engage and get them to talk to Korean Americans more. Um, this had been an issue before the riots. There was the uh, notorious shooting of uh, Latasha Harlins, uh, an African-American girl who went into a Korean-American owned uh, market or liquor store, uh, which, which was an earlier incident that had caused the flaring up of relations between Korean-Americans and African-Americans. But in some ways, the same problems relating to race and economics were, were tearing Los Angeles apart in the 1990s. And even though I think that we've made a lot of progress since then. Um, I think that American cities continue to be a place where um, ethnic groups can be divided on the basis of, of race and, and economics. And it takes a conscious effort on the part of all ethnic minority communities to try to find ways to work together and not see others as competition. My name is Michael Wu and this is my Saigu story.